Mankind has been interested in the starry sky for several thousand years, but it seems the more discoveries we make, the more mysteries we uncover. Caltech astronomer Michael Brown, also known by the nickname Pluto Killer, was absolutely sure that there were eight planets in our solar system, period, and that there would be no more. But it was Brown who noticed something strange exactly a decade later. His colleague, Constantine Batygin, actually helped Brown to refute his statement. This unusual object was made of ice and glass, had a diameter several times longer than that of the Earth, and was 10 times heavier. It was 20 times further from the Sun than the seemingly ultra-distant Neptune. Scientists estimate that the NASA New Horizons probe would have to fly over 50 years to reach this planet and it would take over 300 years to reach one of the farthest points of its orbit. Thus, somewhere far away in our solar system, there may exist not a dwarf, but an actual ninth planet. Not so long ago, scientists from California have put forward some evidence proving the existence of another planet in our system, in addition to the ones we already know. Maybe you thought to yourself, what's so surprising about Pluto? But this planet is huge and is made up of ice and gases. Its diameter is several times longer than that of our planets, and it's 10 times heavier. Yet again, the solar system is full of surprises. In 2006, the solar system lost its ninth planet when Pluto was demoted to the status of a dwarf planet. Although there was nothing personal about demoting Pluto, to many regular people, so, it is a real loss. The Ninth Planet It all began in 2014 when Brown's postdoctoral students, astronomers Chadwick Trujillo and Scott Shepard, noted a strange pattern in the orbits of several trans-Neptunian objects. The term trans-Neptunian refers to celestial bodies of the solar system that on average orbit the Sun farther than Neptune. Sedna is one of the largest objects of this kind and is about 1,000 kilometers in diameter. It is considered to be a dwarf planet. Furthermore, there's been identified a whole group of similar mini-planets with a common name of sednoids. The results of Shepard and Trujillo's observations showed that 13 Kuiper Belt objects have similar orbits. Scientists tentatively suggested that such synchronization could be caused by the gravitational influence of a previously unknown planet. Although this was a tentative suggestion, the idea behind was quite bold. Although this was a tentative suggestion, the idea behind it was quite bold and Brown initially felt skeptical. But at the same time, it was impossible to completely rule out such a possibility. Brown and Batygin decided to delve into the issue in order to prove or refute the idea once and for all. They dedicated a whole year and a half to the research. The most important conclusion was that six of the 13 mentioned objects have highly elongated orbits pointing in one direction. Can this be a coincidence? Maybe. However, calculations show there's only 1% chance of something like this happening. But this is still not enough to build a strong foundation for an argument. The second line of reasoning had to do with virtually identical orbits which are equally inclined by 30% in the same direction. And the cumulative probability of celestial bodies of the same class having equally elongated and equally inclined orbits seems to be close to none. Scientists took pains to scrupulously calculate this chance, and it turned out to be 0.007 percent. Seven thousandths of a percent say that it's a coincidence. Recalling his state during this aha moment, Brown says he thought his head would explode. But Tegan was just as amazed, and after a minute's pause, he asked Brown, this is for real, right? 
In his subsequent interviews, Batygin said that other scientists had tried to make similar calculations before. But there was always some kind of error, most often in the initial data. Therefore, he said they took maximum caution to avoid falling into the same trap as their colleagues. Indeed, this cannot simply happen by accident. There must be something affecting the orbits of these trans-Neptunian objects. But what is it? After all, the fact that it's a planet hasn't been established, perhaps something is still missing. With such promising data, scientists began to work out hypotheses that would identify that celestial mastermind who, as if by an invisible hand, built the orbits of trans-Neptunian objects in this way. The first line of thinking relies on a very mundane explanation. And according to another one, as yet undiscovered Kuiper objects are to blame. But none of them can manage to pull the whole planet. It's just that there are a lot of them, and their cumulative action brings such an effect. But this idea is quickly refuted. Calculations have shown that in this case, the Kuiper belt should be much heavier than it actually is. But not by two or three times heavier, but at least by 100 times. Thus, even the calculation error should be ruled out. Other hypotheses turned out to be even less believable. And in the end, the brown Patigan group came to the same place where Trujillo and Shepard had begun. It's still a planet. Moreover, it's large enough and massive enough to have such an impact. With so little initial data, it was pointless to start looking for a planet through telescopes. It was necessary to get something else that would narrow the scope of research. Brown and Batygin set about running computer simulations. It was necessary to outline the scope of probabilities, how heavy this hypothetical planet should be, and in what kind of orbit should it have revolving around the Sun. Most importantly, the orbit must be stable. As a result of mathematical modeling, Scientists came up with a preliminary image of the ninth planet. It never approaches the Sun closer than 250 astronomical units, and it is from 600 to 1200 astronomical units away from the Sun at its most distant point. That is, on average, it should be 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune, and have an orbiting period of 10 to 20,000 years. And at the same time, it should be 10 times more massive than the Earth. Considering such planet parameters, the strange behavior of Sedna and its brother the Sednoid 2012 VP113 is easily explainable. The fact is that many Kuiper Belt objects are under the powerful influence of Neptune. They are literally pushed into highly elongated orbits, either approaching or flying away over enormous distances. Sedna never gets close enough to Neptune, which means something else is affecting it something massive. And Sedna is not the only object of this kind. Computer simulations by Brown and Batygin have also led to an unintended discovery. According to these models, there should have been objects with very extreme orbits, inclined perpendicular to the plane where all the planets of the solar system move. It turned out to be a scientific prophecy. Such objects were found really quickly. This set of evidence was enough to boldly assert, the ninth planet definitely exists. Let's look for it in the sky. Even the detected exoplanets supported this. In terms of their parameters, most of them were just close to the planet nine. This means that such a planet is not an anomaly, but a common thing in the universe. Like any bold theory, the work of Brown and Batygin has repeatedly been subjected to constructive criticism by colleagues from different countries. The most compelling counterpoint came from a research team led by Kevin Napier, a physicist at the University of Michigan. Skeptics suggested that an error had crept into the brown Patigan group statement on object grouping. According to them, it was about the so-called observational selection or the selectivity of observation. Kevin Napier's team did a special cross-sectional analysis to identify holes in the theory. To assess the observational selection factor, 
scientists identified 14 similar trans-Neptunian objects discovering using not one, but three different astronomical surveys, including the Outer Solar System Origins Survey and the Dark Energy Survey using different telescopes. The analysis actually showed that all these objects were found close to areas of the sky where the observational selection function calculated specifically for this case reaches maximum. That is, in areas where the telescope can simply see better. This observation is consistent with the assumption that the objects aren't grouped in clusters, but are more or less uniformly dispersed. Petigian himself didn't agree with these arguments. He pointed out that Napier's group explored the same region of the sky as he did in his observations, and simply discovered more distant objects. So, excluding clusters makes no sense. A more relevant question is whether their analysis can distinguish between a crowded or uniform distribution, and it seems that it can't, Batygin said in an interview with Science Magazine. After all, even the authors of the critical work themselves admit that it's too early to completely rule out that the ninth planet exists. Since even skeptics didn't abandon the idea that the ninth planet exists, a question remained. Where did this strange planet come from? Scientists assume that it was born along with the rest of the planets at the initial stage of the solar system formation. This early period was quite chaotic, to say the least. Dramatic movements and collisions were happening all the time. Being too close to Jupiter or Saturn, Planet 9 could have been ejected to the periphery of the solar system as a result of a gravitational maneuver. Other hypotheses suggested that this is a homeless rogue planet, which had joined our solar system in the distant past. And like a forced refugee, the planet tries to be nonchalant and stay unnoticed. Such a poetic version is far less likely. There have even been some assumptions which were too out there. For example, it could be a stellar-type black hole, or even a primordial black hole that formed shortly after the Big Bang. And this is a completely solid scientific assumption, albeit an extreme one. Such objects only sound scary, but in fact, they behave like ordinary stars or distant massive planets. But the chance such a gloomy inhabitant exists in our system is close to none. If we throw away pure science fiction, there remains a fairly convincing theory about the existence of a fully formed ninth planet. Different scientists estimate this probability from 60 to 99 percent. But no matter how convincing the theoretical arguments and circumstantial evidence may look, the planet still needs to be registered by devices in order to finally resolve the issue. And this is perhaps a more difficult task than all the previous ones. Since the planet's orbit is very elongated, its distance to us can vary greatly. Let's take extreme cases. If the planet is at aphelion, that is, at the farthest point of its orbit, then we need powerful telescopes to detect it. For example, ground-based instruments such as the WM Keck Observatory and the Subaru Telescope Hilo Base Facility, which are both located in Hawaii. Things become simpler if the planet is at perihelion, that is, the closest point, and many ground-based telescopes can detect it but we have no idea as to where the planet is now, and we can't wait 20,000 years until it's at the closest point. But it's still possible to narrow the scope of the search, and astronomers have found a solution using simple logic. Scientists suggest that if the planet were closer to perihelion, it would most likely have already been found, and not even on purpose, but simply when comparing regular observation results for different periods. Therefore, the planet is presumably located at a far point and moves there extremely slowly relative to objects with constant location, like stars. Very low brightness and slow speed make detection an extremely challenging task. However, scientists have been previously able to detect even dimmer trans-Neptunian objects, so there's nothing fundamentally impossible about it. However, there may emerge another kind of problem. The fact is that the area of the sky where the planet can hide is 400 square degrees, 
This is 2,000 times the area occupied by the moon in the starry sky. Even though this is only a small part of the entire observable sky, which is as wide as 40,000 square degrees. So again, finding a ninth planet is difficult, but not impossible. In practice, a special telescope is needed to identify the planet. It should have a very large and at the same time high aperture mirror, plus a wide-angle camera to cover as much of the sky as possible at the same time. These conditions are met only by a few modern telescopes. Brown and Batygin use the mentioned Subaru with its 8-meter mirror and the 870-megapixel wide-angle camera. The scientific community places great hope on the LSST telescope, the large synoptic survey telescope of the Vera Rubin Observatory, which is under construction. The pandemic undermined scientists' plans, and in March 2020, the construction was put on hold. Now, the most favorable prospect of putting the telescope in full operation has shifted to October 2023. But if this finally happens, and its three gigapixel camera still captures the coveted tiny speck, it will be a worldwide sensation that will stay at the front pages for a long time.